Welcome everyone to Tuesday with eTug Lunch and Learn webinar. My name is Lee Lee and I'm with BC Campus Professional Learning. Tail sessions were established a few years ago as a way for eTug members to share out what they are currently learning and doing. These webinars are recorded with summary notes and posted to eTug.ca. So be sure to check there for past webinars you may have missed. Today is maybe the last tail session of this academic year, so I'd like to take the opportunity to invite all of you to let us know if you have something you'd like to share with us in a future session. Uh, please get in touch with me or Grant Gregson, who is coordinating the tails with me. Uh, Grant is with the Teaching and Learning Center at Emily Carr University and is a member of the steering committee for ETUG. Um, and the steering committee are the group that volunteer and help to organize ETUG events and activities. So Brad, I'll turn things over to you now. Thanks, Leva. Uh, my name is Brad Gregson, and welcome to today's TEL session entitled Enhancing the Online Experience for Students and Their Instructors with a Modern Flat File CMS. Our guest presenter today is Paul Evans. Paul is a university educator as well as a practitioner and advocate of people-centered design. For over 20 years, he has delivered successful strategies and design solutions through creating, leading, and training for organizations such as SAP Business Objects, the Canadian Real Estate Association, and the University of British Columbia. Leveraging this pro professional user experience design skill set with his extensive instructional background, Paul thrives on the challenges of learner experience design for today's multi-device world of connected learners. For more info on Paul, visit his website at www.hewittsdesign.com. Today, Paul will share with you his recent work with the modern thought file, no database, web platform CMS called Grab to complement and enhance SFU's Canvas LMS. For today's session, there will be three question breaks where Paul will pause to take any questions you may have. You may type in questions at any time in the chat window by typing your questions and hitting the return key. I will moderate these questions and ask Paul then at the question breaks. The other option is during the breaks to ask questions directly to Paul by clicking on the talk button located in the audio and video window. Please be sure to turn off, turn off the talk button when you have finished asking your questions. Thank you all for coming today and may I present. Thanks very much Grant and Neva and it's a pleasure for me to be here. Um, hopefully the audio is coming through okay. Let me know in the chat window, Levo Grant, if there's any issues. Um, so uh, let's get started. And I'm really excited actually to share with all of you some of the recent work that I've been doing uh, in relation to making the, the online experience better for students and, well, people like myself, instructors. So let's start off uh, with really a state of the world kind of situation. So I'm sure you can all relate to this that our ongoing uh, challenge right now is to improve the student experience. Uh, student expectations are higher than they've ever been for their online and digital components. And, you know, if that's not enough, we also have to think about this situation where whatever institution we're working at, uh, we also have to make sure that we're using any required LMS uh, along with that, so whatever that might be. But, you know, that's not really the whole thing either. There's more of a challenge facing us than that, and that is we need to also try to minimize the workload of instructors. So here we have a real quandary, don't we? We want to improve the student experience regardless of the LMS that we're using and at the same time looking for ways that we can minimize the workload of instructors. So, Today, I want to share with you an approach that I've been working on for the last couple of months that might be of interest to others in terms of the concepts and ideas and maybe even some of the exact technology that I'm using. So this is my basic approach uh, where I want to and I have created an open platform to provide an alternative front door to whatever LMS. And I'll, I'll talk about the LMS that I have to use in a minute. Why would I want to do this? Why do I want to you know, create this alternative front end to an LMS. Well, first of all, I want to provide a significantly better student experience. Not just a little bit better, I mean significantly better student experience. Also, 
I want to make my life easier. Let's be honest. It takes time for an instructor to maintain a website for their course, to update materials to the website when they start a new term. I want to make sure that I have the ability to do faster and easier updates. And this is more important than ever. It's 2015. The rate of change that we see online with information is something that we really haven't seen before. And for my own course materials, my course has to change more rapidly than it ever has. So today I'll be sharing with you how we can use a modern flat file CMS. And I'm going to be uh, defining that in just a moment. And in my experiences, a modern flat file CMS is a great platform for this approach, improving the student experience while decreasing instructor uh, workload. Um, and basically, you know, this can be as simple or as complex as you want it to be. In my case, I'm keeping it very simple. I just use the LMS where it's useful, and I have deep links directly into required assignments, quizzes, collaboration elements in the LMS. And of course, if you have some technical chops, you can also use LTI or learning tools interoperability if your LMS supports it to get more complex. But the example that you'll see today here is a fairly basic approach just with simple deep links. So what makes a CMS modern? So a few things I like to highlight. Uh, first of all, it has a modern uh, base uh, code of PHP often, or whatever language it might be, but most of them are PHP where it's designed from the ground up to be reliable, it's more uh, speedy, it's more extensible. It uses current standards like Markdown instead of HTML markup, which I find easier as an instructor. Twig, which is a templating language that's much easier to understand than PHP. YAML, et cetera. So as an instructor, I don't want to have to relearn everything all the time. I want to use a system that has standards built in so I can leverage those standards and other experiences and other platforms as time goes on. It goes without saying that we want full mobile and multi-device support. We also want modular content. Now, this is something that is uh, quite uh, beneficial as an instructor. I'll show you some examples. The idea is simple. The idea is if I have content in one place in my course companion, I want to be able to reuse that content in another place without copying it, just by presenting the same piece of information multiple times. It's much handy, much handier for me. And also, I want further separation of content from preparation, from presentation, pardon me. So I have a little bit more flexibility. And I'll be showing you some examples of all of these in a little bit. Um, what does the term flat file mean then? Well, probably a lot of you are familiar with CMSs like WordPress. There's one. Uh, how about some LMSs like Moodle, uh, Canvas, things like that. Um, flat file simply means that rather than using a database, uh, which we all enjoy the security issues of, um, files are just stored as simple text files. And that's it. There is no database. The CMS I'm going to show you today called Grab has no database. This translates often into much faster response time because content is not retrieved and presented from a database. Content is actually just simple files that are presented in the browser. As an instructor, this also has a great attribute of being portable. You can copy an entire Grav or another modern flat file CMS uh, site just by using a simple file copy and not worrying about databases, duplication, SQL, usernames, passwords, all that kind of stuff. Um, and because everything is simple files, text files actually, it's all 100% version controllable. In other words, if you store it on your Dropbox, you can retroactively step back in time and find an earlier version. If you use GitHub, you can do the same thing. There's all kinds of other tools out there. Um, but it, it really is great to be able to step back in time on not just your content, but also your templating files and all your other configuration files. So that's a brief definition of flat file. So guess what? There's a ton of modern flat file CMSs out there. And trust me, I have taken the time to take a look at a lot of them. Because when I started to hatch this idea around Christmas or after Christmas this year, I started looking for what was you know, the best tool for me as an instructor who is web savvy, what can I use to, to kind of do this alternative front door, front end environment for an LMS. So, by the way, all of these that I'm showing you right there on the slide are good, solid, modern flat file CMSs. I looked at them all too, uh, but they didn't quite have what I was looking for. 
Um, and of course, as you know from the title of today's session and reading the description, what I'm going to be talking about is GRAV. Uh, GRAV is a very interesting project. GRAV started about a year ago uh, by the team at Rocket Themes. They make uh, commercial quality themes for WordPress and Joomla, by the way. And they started this open source project. And, and that's a key thing. Some of the, the CMSs I showed you in the previous slide, by the way, were not open source. Um, Grav is open source. And you know, for me, that's the only way to go. So that was an important thing. And a Grav is uh, lots of great attributes. And I'll be getting into them um, in more detail. Uh, I see someone has put in, thanks, Sylvia, the uh, URL for the, the site. You can download Grav today. And you can download it and try it out. All you need is a PHP server. Hallelujah, you do not need to configure an SQL database. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, looking a little bit more about Grav, um, it has a lot of the main attributes we've been just talking about. It's really super fast. And again, students, one of the most premium resources that students have is time. And also, as an instructor, that's true too. You don't want a slow delivery of your course companion. You want something really fast. Super easy to install and, and maintain. Again, it's a no database solution. It's extremely extensible. Grav is very open-ended. Uh, again, you'll see some examples of that. And it's open source. Can't stress how important that is to me conceptually as an instructor and also for um, usage for the system. It's a, a great system that I can actively contribute to, uh, to the community. So we'll be taking a lot of more uh, detailed look into Grav, but I thought that this is probably a good point to kind of stop and pause for any initial questions. So what we've covered so far is I talked about our ongoing challenge. Of course, it's only one of many, but there you go. We want a better student experience regardless of the LMS that we have to use uh, and also trying to decrease our, our instructor's workload. This is in the kind of approach of creating an alternative LMS front end. Uh, and we looked at a modern flat file CMS as a great candidate to do this uh, for the reasons of portability and speed, I'd say, are two of the main reasons for me. Uh, I shared with you some example modern flat file CMSs. Uh, maybe some of you out there have seen some of them before. I'd love to hear any feedback. But the one we're going to focus on today is Grav, the one that I've actually built this working prototype in. Uh, and then we'll see uh, where we want to go from there. So why don't we just pause here and uh, Grant, I'll go over to you if anybody would like to ask any questions. Thank you. The, uh, the floor is open right now. Um, I didn't see anything coming through in the chat, but, uh, but I'll just open it up uh, if anybody wants to use their talk button or just ask uh, uh, some questions. I've, I've got a few of my own, but I'll, I'll just wait for uh, some questions from the, from everybody out there. Well, hi, Paul. It's uh, Keith here. Um, I'm just wondering what um, other features that we might have, um, ex you know, expect to have if we have something like a WordPress installation, things like uh, identity management or uh, a few of the interactive features. Are any of these um, uh, doable with Grav? Do they find some way to manage that as well in this system? Great question, Keith. So definitely, uh, you know, Grav is, is not going to be a feature by feature uh, equal to WordPress. Um, right now, Grav is focusing, I'd say, more on um, very fast deployment of content and being able to add third party services extremely easily. They are working on a, an administration panel, which we will see as we go along, which we are looking at some level of user permissions. But I guess in my approach, I'm keeping all of that kind of stuff in the LMS. So for me, um, things that require user permissions and assignments and quizzes and grading and that kind of stuff, I'm kind of moving and keeping in the LMS while using Grav to hook into third-party tools for multi-device content presentation. Um, and so I don't have to really deal, if you know what I mean, with, with user management per se. But there is some work going on on that front. And I think once the admin panel comes out, could be hopefully in the next couple of months, uh, we will see that. Uh, does that uh, answer most of your question? And, and, and as we go along, there might be a few things that, that will kind of appear as well. Yeah, thanks. You're welcome.
Hi, Paul. Uh, this is Grant. I've, I've, I've got a question on. Uh, so, would this just be for one faculty, or is this a multi-user? When you when you do an installation, would this be multi-user? And uh, you know, uh, may, maybe this is uh, preceding the um, things you're going to talk about later on. But uh, it, yeah, that's a straight-up question. There. Sure. Thanks. Um, so right now, it's not really multi-site. Um, there is, interestingly, some support already in the tool to do that, like for multi-site WordPress, let's say, as an equivalent. Um, so there is some structure in there, but it's not really uh, accessible unless you're a dev at this point. I wouldn't be surprised to see that come along quite quickly once we have a web administration panel. But for me right now, it's more kind of like a per instructor thing. So let's say your institution has an LMS and let's say 80% of your instructors love that and only need that. Perfect. Great. However, let's say that some of your instructors are finding great difficulty in delivering the student experience they want with the LMS that they need to use. That's when a tool like this to me comes in where on a course or instructor basis it can be used as an alternative. Um, and like I say, providing some really sweet abilities to make faster course updates uh, and lots of other things that we'll get into in a few minutes. Um, so I, I think that's the way that I currently see it. But on the other hand, of course, you know, depending on the institutional needs, you could definitely make a set of institution-wide templates and just simply have an instance wherever they need it. Again, with no database. You see, a lot of the issues of multi-site kind of go away in my eyes, and instructor can just host that many server that has PHP, and then they're done. And um, if they want to back up or do things for next term, it's simply copying files. So it really is a different paradigm to me than the traditional database-driven LMS or CMS. Does that answer your question, Grant? Yeah, it does. Yeah, thanks very much, Paul. Uh, we have another question from Keith. He says, you mentioned Dropbox. Will Grab work from a Dropbox location? That would be a great quick CMS solution. Right. You know, it's all almost, right? The, the thing with Dropbox is it lets you store and present static uh, HTML sites, but it does not have PHP support. So I use Dropbox, though, for all my Grab authoring. So how am I doing it? Well, what I have is I simply have a little script that will uh, mirror a Dropbox folder to my FTP site. This allows me to edit my site on multiple machines of my choosing. And because Dropbox, by the way, does support version control, I also can retroactively restore any version that I want to. And because Grab is no database, guess what? No student data. Hallelujah, I can store it anywhere I want. No risk of uh, student data being a part of that. So I can have it on Dropbox, doesn't matter. I can edit it multi-machines, doesn't matter. And then when I have my sync to my FTP site, boom, I can serve it up there and then my users access it from there. Frax just commented, sounds like a perfect way to try out the new BCNet Edu Cloud service. Yeah, you know what? Uh, that's a really interesting comment too. If, if EduCloud, as long as EduCloud provides us with a reasonably new PHP version, uh, not the newest, but reasonably new, uh, it's amazing. It's like a file copy and you've got a CMS going. It, it really is a different way to, to experience things. <laughs> Okay, Grant, I'll, I'll check in with you if you want to, uh, if there are any other questions, I can handle it. Otherwise, I'll uh, continue then. Great. Thanks, Paul. Okay, sure. Okay, so enough already. You probably want to see what all this looks like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a little brief tour of a grad site. Um, I will also provide you with a URL and you can explore it live on the web. Um, and then I'll kind of peek under the hood, if you will, and we'll look at how things are done with Grav. And it's going to be probably a little bit, you know, heavy for you in terms of it's a lot of new ideas at once. But this is just going to be like an introductory level for the most part, give you a sense of what it's like, and then another Q&A break in the middle of this session, and another one at the very end. So uh, I'll do my best to answer any questions that you have as you go through. Uh, one thing I should stress before I show you this is, I just wanted to show you that this is my, uh, my kind of design process and toolkit. While I love Grav and I'm talking about Grav and you're going to be seeing Grav, you know, we're all educators here. We all know that technology is not the answer. Uh, so there's a lot of learning design that's gone on in this design as well in the background. There's a lot of 
trying to match technology with my needs that I have to provide for my learners. So I just wanted to mention that caveat before we begin, uh, because we're going to get pretty techy pretty soon, but there's definitely a lot of design um, behind what you're going to see here in a moment. So last term, um, I did my 363 course. 363, by the way, is a user interface design course that SFU I teach up there as a session instructor. And this is a snapshot of my 363 website from just the fall, uh, which was the precursor to me trying to come up with a better way to do things. And um, this is Canvas, by the way. And uh, you know, don't get me wrong, uh, Canvas is a pretty nice LMS in many ways. It's a pretty instructor friendly LMS. And SFU does a great job of supporting it and providing uh, for instructors um, to, to set up courses and all that kind of good stuff. But for my course and for what I'm trying to deliver to my students, um, Canvas was not so great. And so here are some issues that I kind of faced with Canvas. Um, Canvas has a suboptimal, and that's putting it kindly, multi-device experience. Again, our students are on the you know, their, uh, their phones, their tablets, we need to be where our students are. And it's crazy that so many things are not fully multi-device friendly still this, in 2015. But anyway, it has a suboptimal multi-device experience of the economy. Um, site response can be kind of sluggish at times. Again, it's a database driven system. Uh, messaging and discussion forms are not really that great in terms of end user experience. Um, there is very uh, little, um, it's not a streamlined method. It does support some integration with third party software, but not very well. Not with what I want to do. A big thing for me is that pages are just big, huge blobs of content. So when I'm in Canvas, and this applies to most other LMSs out there, if I have a quote page I want to present to my students, it is just one big chunk of content, which means every time I need to make a change to that page or update it, I have to deal with the entire page. I can't just go in and make one little tweak quickly. I have to take the slow route and update the whole thing. Um, and there's really, with Canvas, very limited support, well, no real support, actually, for changing the page or site layout things. So again, Canvas is a great fit for certain instructors, but for my needs and for the student experience, it kind of lacks in some aspects. So this is what got me into looking at modern flat file CMSs, and I was exploring different ways to do things. And so uh, this is uh, the prototype that I have going right now for um, next fall, because I'm slotted to teach it hopefully in the next fall. So what you're seeing here is Grav. Um, and so uh, first of all, uh, Grav is not restrictive in any way for me as an instructor. I can make it to what I want it to be. Um, and of course, it's fully multi-device friendly at its core. So these are just some snapshots of, from an iPhone. Um, and so all the content, all the type, everything scales very nicely on whatever device that you throw at it. It's uh, using a very modern framework called um, Materialize, uh, which is based on the material design language of Google, by the way. So it has a nice overall uh, unified feel. And if we go back here and take a look at it, here's an example of how well I can integrate third-party functionality. So for me, I found a couple, probably about two years ago, an online live chat widget is, uh, is something that my student system went ape about and loved the fact they could be, while they're looking at the course content and interacting with the course content, they can actually bring up a chat window if I'm online and start chatting with me right then and there. Um, and so in the lower right hand corner of your screen, you'll see that this chat window is there. Not possible with Canvas. Um, and, and, and some LMSs do support something like that, like Moodle would support it more, um, but kind of more at an admin level, not an instructor level. Um, so, uh, but with Grav, I was able to do that quite quickly and nicely, which is great. Also, if you look at the main global navigation bar, you'll see Home, Schedule, Techniques Guide, Resources, Slack, and My Balsamic. For those of you who haven't heard, Slack is taking the, the, the communications world by storm. It's a real-time online messaging tool. Um, now we see actually students, for instance, doing co-op terms with you know, companies are using Slack. Uh, Slack, I think, is a great feature in the world of education as a modern, real-time messaging group discussion form. Um, and it integrates right into the menu bar. And so I can actually have my students seamlessly go onto their Slack site that I'll provide for them with the appropriate fit plus sign uh, thing, of course. And uh, they'll be able to do that. So I can integrate third-party tools even in my global navigation bar. 
Um, here's a, a page uh, within the course companion that they, you see the materials for the week. And if we scroll down, we see that I have the first assignment. And again, this is not anything new here, folks, but it's so easy to do, right? So here's my assignment. I have my assignment link. And as soon as a student clicks on that, then they go to the LMS. So in other words, when the LMS is making sense, for me, it's assignments, quizzes, syllabus, and student collaboration tools, perhaps. I use that LMS. And uh, if not, I'm not going to lower my student experience by using it for content presentation, getting access to third-party tools, providing collaboration environments, perhaps outside the LMS. I'm going to use other means. And so this is the Canvas prototype that I'm working on that you see is really minimal, right? Uh, only using the strengths of the LMS and then everything else in my alternative front end. And in fact, if the student was really determined and they logged into the LMS, what they would see is this, where they see the LMS front page and they have this big, nice, noticeable button <laughs> that will launch the alternative front end companion, and then, of course, all the elements that are in the Canvas LMS itself. But I'm not expecting my students to use both systems, if you know what I mean. I'm expecting my students to only use that front door uh, for that, 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 that interface to the website that I showed you. Um, so uh, all of this is done with a platform called Grav. Um, and for the rest of the presentation, we'll be focusing on the particulars of Grav, now that you've seen a little bit of what it can do. Um, and uh, during the next break, I'll share with you the URL if anybody has it. There, there is the, you can explore the prototype of the Grav site online as well, as I just showed you. So uh, as I was saying already, Grav is a modern flat file CMS. Uh, again, it's not like it's a silver bullet. It's just the fact that of the modern flat file CMSs I looked at, this one fit me best for my learning objectives of what I'm trying to do with my course companion. And so maybe you might see some things that are, are nice for you. So let's take a little peek here and see what Grav can do. So first of all, Grav can really be whatever you want it to be. Grav, out of the box though, will allow you to create basically three types of pages, if you will, or content pages for your students. Standard page, which is basically just a single page with HTML or Markdown in there. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, a listing page, where you're probably quite familiar with this in WordPress, where you have a page of blog entries. And it could be an entry of anything, right? Like for me, it's weekly summaries. And a student could go in and look at that. Uh, so that's quite familiar. But it has this really super powerful presentation uh, style called modular. And modular means that you can have one page that's actually constructed of smaller content chunks. And you can reuse these content chunks on different pages. You can even present them differently on different pages. And so when you make a change, you just make a change at one place, and it gets populated to all the other pages that uses it. And I'll be showing you a bit more of this later. But that, that's your basic uh, kind of three out of the box, if you will, formats that are provided by Grav. Um, and something like WordPress is good for like standard and listings. Something like Moodle is good for standard. Uh, and, but modular is really powerful, and we'll see an uh, example of that soon. So let's go, and this is where like, you, know, you have to really give yourself a little bit of time to think about this, but let's go behind the scenes now and look at a file directory. Oh my gosh, this is very different, right? So in WordPress or Moodle or whatever else you use with the database CMS, LMS, Everything is stored in the database. But here, everything is stored in a file. And so looking at my file directory, you'll see, oh, look, home, schedule, UX techniques guide, resources. Those sound similar to you or familiar to you. Pardon me, right? Those are like the four main global navigation items. Those are actually the pages that you saw earlier in the graph prototype. And looking in the home page, you'll see, oh, look, there's a reminder chunk. There's a chunks for each week. There's also a chunk for preparations for the student and a chunk for the welcome message. And so in other words, for each listing, that, that page is basically a listing type page. For each, in WordPress lingo, you'd say blog entry. In Grav, each listing entry is basically just a, a folder with a file in it. So let's take a little bit of a peek here. Let's go over to our home page. 
check this out. You see the home page? This is the uh, important information or reminders area. This is the weekly preparations area. And then down below is week like four, three, two, one, et cetera, et cetera. So this page, as you can kind of see from that previous slide, is actually made up of different kind of components. So if we take a look at one of these components, you'll see how simple this can be. And of course, it can be also very complex. So remember that little reminder area that you noticed? Well, this is a little file that is everything that's needed to present in that reminder area. Uh, this is, by the way, Markdown. And when you see a number of number signs, it just means the equivalent to like an H5 and H4 level heading. So that's all that is. By the way, don't let Markdown throw you. I'm not going to talk about Markdown very much in this presentation. But if you don't like Markdown, you can use HTML instead. So there's no problem. Uh, Grav supports HTML and Markdown files, so you don't even have to use Markdown. But as an instructor, a little bit of education with Markdown has made my life a lot easier because often with HTML, I forget to close my tags and they add more noise to my content and all that kind of stuff. So I like it anyway. But um, you can see here that, wow, this is it. Like this is all I need to do to change my important dates. So as my course goes through and I need to update to let my students know what's the upcoming assignment, I just go into this one little file, make my little change, save it, and I'm done. The time it takes to update that is a fraction of what it takes to do it in another LMS or CMS for the most part. And as you can see, it, it's just almost pure content. I don't have to muck around with everything else that you saw on that page. So let's go back to the page. And you'll see another thing here, another chunk of content called weekly preparations. And in the weekly preparations, uh, we see the required reading for students. And also, we see the reading quiz that's coming up. Let's take a look under the hood and see what that content fall looks like. And now you're seeing something very interesting. In Grav, uh, you can actually kind of support structured content. Like in most LMSs and CMSs, it's just a chunk, a blob of content. Maybe it's form of HTML. But it's basically a blob of content. Here, I can actually define uh, a data element called reading, a data element called quiz, and a data element called slides. Provide the text and the link for each of those elements. And magically, that is translated into this presentation. Now, one thing I should mention is that right now, Grab does not have a web-based interface. But once it does, this could be presented as simple labels and fields of a form. In other words, very user friendly. Right now, it's a bit raw in meaning that it, it, you have to work with Grav at this text level. If you don't want to, it, you have to. It's the only way to do it. But the web panel that I'll be showing you briefly uh, will be an alternative to this. But the important thing is, is that if I ever tried to do this with another LMS or CMS, I would the time it would take me to custom code that would be quite significant. With Grab, with a little bit of web savviness, I'm able to do something that I could never do myself uh, with a lot of other systems out there. Um, let's take a look at one other example here. Uh, here we have week four materials. So this is on the main home page. You see it just gives the student the critical elements here, right? The, the in-class poll that we had at the end of the class and the slides. If we want to look at more materials, there's a link. We click on that link. And then we go to the detail page. We have the summary. Now we see the slides, you know, HTML, PDF, et cetera. Um, and we're going to have our next question and answer break in just a moment. So I'm sure there's some questions out there. I'll show you one more slide. Behind the scenes, this is the file for my weekly materials. Notice that here, I don't know if you can see my pointer, hopefully again. And the first part of it, you see summaries and questions, presented slides, and then those three equal signs, and then you have more content. I can actually define in my file what I want the student to see on the home page as the summary of the week versus the details of the summary on the detail page. So again, as an instructor, this is really, really useful for me because I can help students prioritize information. I can make that home page load really fast, really quick, only have the most critical information, and then have as much information as I want on my detailed weekly page. And doing this, again, in most other CMSs or LMSs is not uh, either easy or if it is, uh, I mean, not possible. And if it is possible, usually you have to do custom coding, uh, which would be beyond uh, most instructors. 
Okay, I'm sure there are some questions out there. So uh, Grant, I'll pause here again for another Q&A break. Thank you. Hi, Paul. Yeah, that's great. Um, there was a question from Mary Burgess. Uh, is there a GUI way to do what you're showing in these files, or does one need to do editing within the files themselves? So that's, um, you know, for a number of instructors, there's always that uh, easy HTML view um, so they don't have to get into scripting, because even a little bit of scripting can be quite confusing. Yes, that's a great point. So I, I think with Grab, what I find is there's like there's different levels. Yeah, you can, there's different levels that you can do. Um, so if you just want to work with Grab in terms of you know putting, if I can use the word content in there for the most part, you don't have to know any real scripting unless you want to do some formatting in HTML. But really, at that point, you're just looking at putting content in there. You wouldn't have those data fields that I showed you earlier. That would be a, the next level. But the basic level is just putting content in and formatting it. Um, but the interesting thing is that unlike WordPress, like WordPress, there is a huge chasm, let's say, between putting in content and creating custom content presentation templates. There's like a lot of learning that has to go on, including PHP. With Grav, the languages and, and, the, and the methods are, are much more, if I can use the word digestible for, for instructors. So if you have an instructor that's more tech savvy, they can on their own do more than they ever could to customize their environment with the same skill set as they could, let's say, with another tool like Moodle or WordPress. But they don't have to, right? They don't have to, but if they can, if they want to. From an institutional viewpoint, though, it gets quite interesting because then what you could do if you wanted to support some instructors with this environment is you could provide a empty, what Ralph calls a skeleton, an empty template of a site. And because it's not database, it's just a bunch of files. So literally, an instructor could copy it over to their server, and they're done. <laughs> and they have a live course companion, which then they can go in and edit. So that's the interesting thing I find about Grav, is that there's a really gradual continuum between the most novice user and the most expert user, while most other LMSs and CMSs, this, 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 this difference is a chasm <laughs> rather than a gradual continuum. So I hope that answered your question. Great. Do we have some other questions out there? Uh, Paul, I've got another question, which is um, with, uh, with the, about authentic authenticating to Graph uh, and how it integrates with the CMS. I, I noticed you had a link there to the companion. Um, the reason I'm asking is if it can be used by students, uh, for instance, giving them permission to a particular section, kind of like a wiki. Gotcha. So right now, uh, because they don't have uh, user uh, support in Grav, that's not really possible. Mm -hmm. Things you could do. One is because Grav is so totally extensible, you could you know, connect either a university wiki tool or, a, or another wiki tool of your choice to do something like that either within a graph page itself or launching an external link. Um, so as time goes on though, and once the admin panel comes out and you'll see that shortly and also user permissions, then something like that could be done. But you know, it's, it's kind of really an interesting balance, right? It's kind of like, you know, do we want to um, you know, keep bringing in extra functionality to duplicate what an LMS would have or do we want to kind of keep uh, maybe what Grab is as this kind of subset that you know it's doing its thing, and then maybe for collaboration where it's student data and all those other issues that we have to concern ourselves about, maybe that's on you know a blessed institutional server or things like that. So um, I guess to answer your question in summary, there's nothing built into that, but I think it has some really interesting ways to extend that functionality or even partner with some of that functionality that you might already have uh, with the institution. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Um, any other questions before we continue? Well, there's a question from Sue Donner. Uh, have you tested Grab with students who use assistive technologies, et cetera? Uh, is it accessible? So I haven't done particular testing on that. 
Um, I would say though that it looks promising in terms of it, it really encourages proper markup and encourages things like you know using uh, H-level headings and that's how it translates markdown stuff into uh, straight HTML. Um, so at least you know looking at screen readers and stuff, the content is presented as you would hope it would be in that way. Um, but I think uh, as time goes on, I think that will be uh, an area that we'll, we'll continue to work on. Uh, so I think at this point, the best thing would be check out the Grab site, the getgrab.org, and if you have any screen reader software or anything like that on your computer, give it a go and see how that works. But from what I can tell, the way that it presents content, it looks like it's probably got a good chance of being uh, in that direction. Hope that answers your question. Okay, uh, Grant, uh, do you want to check in, or should I just continue? Uh, just continue. Good. Okay. Uh, th there's sorry. There's one one uh, more question here. Is it is its main focus to be used with an LMS? Ah, so great question. Here's my viewpoint. Does an instructor need functionality of the LMS? Yes or no. So if instructor doesn't need the functionality of the LMS then they could use Grab on their own as a nice open source, open platform way to connect with their students, host it on a university server even better. And again, because it is so easy to update and move around for the instructor, that could be a win and for their students. If the instructor does need some LMS functionality, then they could take the approach that I've shown you here today, where if the LMS is failing them or not delivering on some aspects of the experience, they can use then Grab with the LMS to hook into any required functionality. So yeah, you know what, I think by the very nature of this approach, it's meant to be very flexible. If uh, all the needs are met by the LMS, then stick with the LMS. There's no need for anything like Grav. But in places that that's not the case, or where the instructor wants an environment to be more innovative, but yet still use a, a, a LMS of the institution, then I think a tool like Grav can be a really nice uh, possible fit for that. Hope that answers your question. Great. Okay. So I'll continue on. Uh, I know it's quarter two, so I'll make sure we, we, we get to everything here today. We're, we'll be finishing by uh, noon time, I'd say. Okay. So let's continue. Um, so we were talking about uh, some strengths of a modern CMS, and I was talking about modular content. And I want to show you an example of something that I've constructed for my students um, and how modular content makes my life so much easier <laughs> and allows me to provide better information to my students. So for 363, I create what this is called a UX techniques guide. It's a performance uh, support tool that allows the students to kind of, you know, go to an area of the course site and find out what kind of techniques they could use themselves in order to deliver a better user experience when they are designing for in my user interface design course at SFU. And in the past, with all the other LMSs I've used and CMSs, by the way, all of this has been in a big blob. And there's about, um, you know, 40 different categories. Each category is a bunch of links. You can only see like three topics here, for instance. And it's a bear for me to update and maintain, so much so that I don't want to update it. <laughs> and that's not really good for my students because all the time I am finding better resources and I want to share them with my students. Uh, also, I've learned that sometimes my students are as self-driven as, as much as I would hope. And when there's some great content in the UX Techniques Guide, some students are not finding it and they're missing it. And wouldn't it be great if I could show that content like maybe on the weekly summary page so they don't have to go looking for it. But then again, with most CMSs and LMSs, that means I have to duplicate content twice, which means I'm even less likely to ever update it. So here's what we can do with Grav. Now again, this is something that I've uh, templated, and I wouldn't expect uh, an instructor to do so necessarily, but you could provide a, a basic page like this for an instructor to fill in. Okay, so here we are, we have our techniques guide, and if you notice down here, we have a third item, contextual inquiry. So there's, here's some uh, content about contextual inquiry. But as I've already kind of shared with you, graph content can be modular. So if we look behind the scenes here, we'd actually see that each topic 
in the um, user experience techniques guide is a simple folder. And in that folder, there is a simple file. So in contextual inquiry, we have one file called topic. And if I open that up, here it is. What is it? It's basically just the pure content of the topic, cognitive walkthrough, the description, and the three links. And that's it. I mean, I think really from my viewpoint, I couldn't make this any simpler than I, I have it. And so this now means that as time goes on and I want to update a topic in my UX techniques guide for my students, I just have to open up one file for the topic and make my edits in any text editor that I want or on the admin panel, which you'll see soon, and then save it and it's done. Trust me, editing a large complex page like that and most other systems is not quick to do. Plus the risk is one slip of an HTML tag and I've got a whole page of garbly book that I have to track down. So this is also safer for me to edit, if you know what I mean, uh, than going into a whole HTML page to do so. But it gets better because this is a piece of content here that is now modular that I want to reuse somewhere. And sure enough, if you look at this page during my week three materials, you see here contextual inquiry. I can just with simply one line in my content file bring in and link that content from that other location. So now for my students, I can provide inline contextually relatable content for their assignments, for their weekly summaries, whatever I see fit and edit it in one place, have it displayed in multiple places, and be able to edit that also much quicker than I could before. So that's an example of real life modular content. All right. I almost decided not to include this in today's session, but then I thought, well, why not, right? Um, I'm going to show you now something that most instructors would not be doing but if you have an instructor that's really web savvy who wants to really push the boundary of innovation and we can all help support those instructors out there, um, grab templating and theming is so much easier than things like WordPress and Moodle where you have to learn a language called PHP to do what I'm going to show you. So I just wanted to give you a little taste of this, okay? So it's not something that most instructors would do, let's be honest, but for those instructors who want to push the envelope, you certainly could do it. So remember that file structure I showed you earlier before and I showed you how content was stored in pages and files? Same thing goes for templates where unlike most other systems, it's very accessible to users to actually see the code that's used to style content in the system. So now we're talking about a whole other layer of capability here. We're talking about custom presentation of content. And I'll give you just a couple of quick examples. This piece of content here includes the core base twig or the twig, by the way, is a simple templating language. And as compared to PHP, it's much more easy to understand and use as an instructor I'm speaking of. And if you look at this piece of code, and if I told you that what this piece of code does is basically within the area of the content of your web page, it displays the content of your HTML and markup file. And that's it. And you can almost look at that code and go, oh, uh, I see a block of content and there's a div called container and there's the content and that's it. Like nothing like this exists in PHP in terms of simplicity. Let's say that you were interested in Grav and let's say you wanted to have an institutional style Grav theme. The time it would take you to have someone in your IT department or someone who's tech savvy create a more customizable theme to match your institution would be, looking at this example, much faster and easier to maintain in my viewpoint and my experience than doing things like custom PHP coding in Moodle or in WordPress. I'll show you another quick example. Uh, if you remember the um, little reminder box, you remember that little reminder box at the top of the home page? This is the templating code to present that reminder box. Uh, basically just presenting the page content with the style and light blue color in a card panel. Again, not all instructors would be doing this. Just wanted to give you an example. 
And then if we get really in depth, this is getting now quite complex. Um, this is the accordion control or the collapsible panels that you saw in the UX techniques guide. And I know you're looking at this and going, wow, you know, that looks a little bit more complicated. And it is. It's a very custom um, kind of presentation of content. Um, but I want to show you that even something quite complex is much more digestible than the same kind of PHP level code that you would have. So that could be a whole other seminar and presentation about templating and all that. I'm just trying to share with you that a part of being a modern CMS is that it uses a modern standard for templating, not hacked PHP code, but a language called Twig that's designed to be for templating. All right, so we're just about wrapped up here. Uh, a quick sneak peek in the Grav future. This is where things get really exciting um, because Grav is actively working on a web-based admin panel. So this could be, and it looks like this will be similar to the web interface coming out with Grav because editing text is not for everybody. Some people do not like that. Some people like that having a more visual structure. Some people might like to do it online versus locally and then sync to their FTP file. So the graph community is well aware of this and the graph community is working on a dashboard um, where you can go in and see your website and here's an example of seeing your web pages and your structure and being able to click on a web page and to be able to edit your web page and if you use Markdown, it'll even give you a preview of your, of your presentation. Uh, it gives you an index of the images related to this page. Uh, this is a little bit of front matter. This is where you can define your kind of own data structure. Uh, in the future, this could also be provided by like labels and form fields. Um, so, but right now for the first release, it'll probably just be a, a textual area. But this is more like what you would be familiar with, let's say in Moodle or in WordPress some kind of a basic uh, web kind of style editor. And this is where I think Grav will really start to, to catch on. I'm an early adopter of Grav. I've been working with Grav for several months. The admin panel is not even out. I was just doing everything I'm doing um, with straight um, text files. But for me, it's been awesome. The time it saved me is amazing. I've already prototyped my website for next term. Usually <laughs> to design and, and prototype an entire website for me with the kind of functionality that I do, it usually takes me a lot longer. I was able to construct a customized template much faster uh, with Grav than ever before. Um, and I'll just put in here that I'm just putting in the URL of the Grav prototype that I'm talking about and that you can explore on your own time after this presentation. So uh, we're almost up, but we do have a final Q&A break, so I'm looking forward to any questions that you have. Here's a whole bunch of contact, uh, contact information for you. If you have any direct questions, you can feel free to contact me, of course. I'm happy to answer them. We'll have a Q&A break in just a moment, though. And I've also given you some resources and links to grab. But one comment is that uh, I saw this on Tony Bates' Twitter feed recently. He shared EduCause's uh, Next Gen LMS paper. And you know what? I read that paper and you know what? So much of what they're talking about is already available and really Grav, for instance, could be a perfect platform for that. Because Grav is extensible, you could even add in required LMS functionality if you wanted to. But again, that's not my style. My style is to partner Grav with whatever LMS functionality you do need for your students and then have the best of both worlds, including more of your own time. Thanks, Paul. So uh, uh, Grant, I'll move it over to you. Uh, great talk. Any other There's questions? Um, a couple of questions we have uh, in the chat. And uh, Sylvia Wiesner asks, are there any options for visualizing your blocks of non-block content chunks aside from the Arco file structure displayed earlier? And now, so uh, I, I guess you were just demoing that in the admin panel, but uh, any, any more thoughts on that? Yeah, that's a great question. So a good observation as well. Currently, it is only in that file structure you saw the hierarchy. Um, they are exploring some quite interesting ways to present that in that admin panel where you would have more label, you know, field kind of format. Um, there's also a function in Graph called Blueprints, which I'm starting to explore, which allows me, and this is pretty wild here, which allows me to customize the admin interface and to provide custom forms for my data structure. So I am actively creating a Grav um, template 
that I, I plan, or at least I'm considering to put open source as an example. Um, and I might explore how to do the use, using blueprints to kind of provide more built-in hierarchies, visual like presentation support. But at least to start with in the admin panel, I think you will see uh, some support for that, at least to a certain level. But I'll be honest, I'm not sure what that level is yet. <laughs> but I think we're moving in that direction. Thanks for the question. There's uh, Mirror Roads uh, has a question regarding the, uh, I, I believe you call it the Twig code you displayed. Is this, uh, she asked, is this the markdown that, 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 uh, that we were looking at? Ah, OK. So um, markdown is basically a more streamlined way to present content formatting. And so the equivalent of markdown is really like HTML. And like I say, Grav will support HTML or markdown the same file. Twig, oh, by the way, in Markdown or HTML, your instructor would have to be comfortable with using one of those, or a visual you know, editor, at least. Um, Twig, however, is something for your power users or for your you know, institutional you know, kind of usage, where Twig allows you to add custom logic and theming and templating to your grad site. So in other words, uh, I have an expandable accordion on my prototype site. That had to be done with Twig. Um, so you don't need to use Twig. If you just want to use out-of-the-box kind of structures with Grav, you're fine. And you can use modular pages, too, without using Twig. But if you want to take it to the next level and kind of want to have um, custom, you know, database, uh, sorry, custom data fields being presented, or if you want more interaction with a, 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 some content, then Twig would be a way to do that. So it's, it's really meant for power users or developers, but like I say, the distance an instructor has to travel in order to do some simple twig uh, work is much, much less than an instructor. I can't imagine almost any of my fellow instructors being able to go from Markdown and HTML to PHP programming, but I can see with some guidance and feedback and, 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 and learning to go from Markdown and HTML to twig, at least some basic constructs. Hope that answers your question. So Sylvia Reisner uh, asks on top of that, is this similar to Drupal form building modules? And, uh, and just to kind of finish that, that, that thought up, uh, Mira asks, is there a pros con study of tools similar, similar to Grab? Okay, so for the first question, interesting that you mentioned Drupal. You know, I have been a big fan of Drupal 8. I'm watching Drupal 8 develop. I think it's got some great aspects. One of the strongest aspects of Drupal 8 is that it uses uh, modern uh, style templating language like Twig. Drupal 8 uses Twig. Uh, tw uh, Drupal 8 uses YAML as well, which is another data storage standard. So Grav and Drupal 8 actually share some of those same standards. Uh, Modular content, Drupal 8, I mean, that, that is going to be a much more capable and complex system in, in both pros and cons. Um, and things that you could do in Drupal 8, you'd never be able to do with Grav. But as an instructor and for things that I need to do for my courses, um, Grav is more than enough. And uh, I did explore Drupal 8. I seriously considered trying to create a prototype with Drupal 8 for the last couple of months. I ended up using Grav, though, because it had much less of a demand of my time and learning at a time, uh, and I could get to the same result that I wanted to with Drupal 8. Because again, I'm not trying to do anything too complex. Gravel is a good fit. Um, in terms of the second question, uh, modular content, again, Drupal 8 would have much more capability than Grav does. But again, for my purposes, Grav has more than enough for what I need to do. And so again, it was a good fit. I hope I answered both those questions OK. We have some more questions out there. And also on the chat text, just a couple lines up, if you scroll up, I've included the URL for the online prototype so you can actually try out and see how fast and responsive um, a grab site is on whatever device you might have. Paul, I have another thought. Uh, um, you know, I support continuing studies classes here, and, and quite often they don't need WordPress or, or um, you know, the full learning management system. Can you keep Grab private for uh, for use with certain students? So is that a function, or because I, I can easily see this being used as a, as a great tool for continuing studies? 
Sure. I think you could handle it a couple of ways, Grant. One would be, of course, if you put it on one of your institutional servers and you just set up a simple, you know, security login authentication front end to that, then, of course, that would give you that private access. Um, there is movement in Grav for user permissions, and so I uh, can't say when, but it is being worked on, and so once that is out, that would give you another way to do it. Um, uh, so it, it really depends on how you, you want to do it. The, the nice thing about the former, in other words, the nice thing about if you just did it as a front-end authentication and Grav is located on one of your institutional servers, that means for the instructor, the content remains portable. You know, because as soon as we have a database of student information, then a lot of people will be a lot more concerned about where that goes. One of the great things I'm enjoying the most about Grav is that I have the separation of student information versus my course interaction and platform. So now I can move it anywhere I want, host it anywhere I want, copy it over, edit where I want, don't have to worry about FEPA, everything is cool because I know that everything that I need to worry about with students is hosted back, you know, at one of the SFU servers. But you could do it either way, of course, once they come up with user permission support. Thanks, Paul. Sure. Do we have any other uh, questions uh, from folk out there? Okay, well I appreciate everybody attending today. It's been a pleasure to share with you some of my recent work with Grav. I hope you get a chance to check Grav out, see what you think. You can download one of the skeletons that they have on our download site play around with it, you'll love the no database component, I'll tell you that. Uh, as long as your server is running a more, more recent version of PHP, you can kick the tires. And um, as time goes on, if you're interested, I'm going to continue working on my own prototype. I do have plans to put that on GitHub uh, for other instructors to, to learn from and share and all that kind of great stuff, and we'll see what the future holds with Grav. But uh, anyway, thank you everybody for joining me today, and if you have any follow-up questions, feel free to contact me on Twitter or email. On behalf of ETUG uh, and uh, the BC campus community as well as the, uh, the uh, BC community on a whole, thanks very much, Paul, for your session today. Um, as, uh, as we mentioned, uh, you've got all the links here to, uh, to get in touch with you. Thanks, everybody, for attending today's session. Thanks, Grant. Thanks, Paul. And we, we look forward to seeing everybody at ETUG in June. Bye for now.